Are we live? Hello? Hello world? I think we're going to wait for some people to join. Ah, there we go. Some people are joining already. Hello? Good evening. How's everyone? I'm really excited to be doing this because this is our second takeaway and but the first time I'm doing a video about it so it could get a little bit you know a little bit um, spicy <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying are I'm you, just filling time whilst people you, join I think you should uh, are you regretting Jen asking you to do these videos for us yes I, am. <laughs> I don't want to, to do this um, no it's good fun I love why it. don't you could you tell us uh, what you're cooking tonight because I haven't actually right so we are doing uh, the menu is shall I go for the box now yeah. okay I'll get the box okay Okay, here we go. Here is the box, and very conveniently, there is a list that says what's in your box, which is quite helpful. So, we have sourdough with Abernethy butter. I'll come to that in a minute. We have Broccoli for the chicken dish. So, the first dish, sorry, the first dish is roasted beetroots with Douglas fir mayonnaise, goat's cheese, sesame, and some lovely um, chicory, raw chicory that's been compressed, and you'll see that in the bag. So, let's look at that first. So, this is your Douglas fir mayonnaise, it's a little bag like this. You should have a little pot of toasted sesame seeds, like this. You have one apple. You have some beetroot syrup. We have some goat's cheese mousse. We've used Golden Cross goat's cheese. And for the vegetarian version, i.e. the non, because there's gelatin in this, we have some uh, j just normal cheese, which I've actually kept in a warm place, so it's very, very soft. We have the chicory, which has been compressed with a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice and salt in a little vacuum back bag. And we have a box with the word D on it. And guess what's inside when it's got a D on it? It's beetroots <laughs> because of Douglas fir. Okay, so that's all the components for the uh, beetroot dish. So we've got those. <clears throat> and now for the corn fed chicken dish, we have most people will be having a two or four. So we've got these are poached, pre cooked corn fed chicken breasts, and inside there is this stuff which is amazing this is piquillo pepper pesto it's made with uh, piquillo peppers is sort of, sort of uh, cooked over wood uh, with uh, rocket manchego cheese pine nuts tiny bit of garlic and basil so it's really really delicious so that we've got some that's going to plate so I'm going to leave that in a, a warm place to sort of come to room temperature it doesn't need to be hot but we don't want it cold either and we've also put some of that inside, inside the breast, okay? And as I said, these have been already cooked and poached and they're very safe. This chicken, of course, you have to be careful. So it's been cooked to the correct temperature. <clears throat> and lastly, in the box, is a boulanger potato. So, now the boulanger is on its side so we just need to pop it on its correct side and then I'm going to pop that in the oven 180 degrees which you've already turned on because you've read the instructions I, I, I know you have um, and I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil on there actually just a tiny bit okay and then I'm going to pop that in, a, in, in the oven so that's about 18 minutes in there the broccoli 
which we're not going to do just yet, could also just go straight in the oven in this foil tray. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil on there now. Just a tiny bit. A touch of mold and sea salt. And then when the time's right, we're going to slip that in the oven. Um, this green stuff is amazing. It's smoked broccoli puree. It's really good. It's really good. Let's get rid of the box. Um, As you can tell, Steve is used to having a full team clearing up behind him. <laughs> so, little pan. You could actually put this bag in some boiling water, save washing up, um, and then just you know take it straight from the bag. But um, chefs like to be, make hard work of things and washing up. So this is a very super smooth broccoli puree. I love broccoli. So there we go. We've got that in there. So I'm just going to get all this ready. So what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get it ready. So if I was going to eat it, this is the order that I would do things in, if that makes sense. I'm going to do the starter last, if that makes sense. So broccoli puree. Um, and then we have this really beautiful longestine sauce or nontoise sauce. Um, it's basically a shellfish sauce. It's very, very nice. I've got that. And again, we'll put that straight in there. You don't need a lot of sauce, so it may look like there's not much there, but it's incredibly strong, this sauce, so um, you don't need lots. There we go, that's in there. And, okay, that's it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is cook the chicken. Hot hob pan. We need that nice and nice and hot. Whilst we're waiting for that. So on, hot, on, on the arga, that's on our hottest one, isn't it? Yeah, this is this is quite hot. I don't really like the argas, but this is you know we shouldn't say that. But, um, <laughs> there goes the sponsorship. <laughs> but um, uh, so we're going to get a nice hot pan. So whilst we're doing that, I can just tell you about the dessert. The dessert is very simple. It's a beautiful, it's like a chocolate marquise. It's, um, it's got layers of hazelnut daquoise, uh, chocolate mousse, uh, like a team base, and a beautiful mirror glaze over the top. So I'm just gonna place that on a plate, and that's ready. So the great thing is you can get your dessert ready at the start, and then, when you've had a few glasses of wine, you know, you're, you're going to be okay just to grab it and, and run with it. So I'm going to put that over here. And then also whilst we're waiting for this pan to heat up, we can take our butter, our Abernethy butter. This has got really beautiful, if you can see it, it's got dulse mixed through the butter. Now, the, you can still hear me, the lady that produces this butter is called Alison Abernethy and it's really lovely. I'm going to actually break it just so you can see it. Let me put it this way up. Just because you can. So there's the butter. And then also we have some incredible sourdough which I've wrapped in some paper for you. Okay, so we can put that on a nice plate as well. And so here we are. We've got our sourdough and our butter. So we're getting everything ready. And I'm running out of room already. <laughs> Always complaining. Jen, Jen's getting really worried about how he's going to have to do with clearing up when you keep throwing everything out. I know, I know. <laughs> Just for dramatic purposes. Okay, so we've got the bread and butter at the start. Um, we're kind of organised on the starter. We know what we're doing on that. So, so what we need to do is get this, this chicken on. So chicken's in a bag. It's going to be wet. So... Um, just one question, uh, can you say, what did you say was in the butter? It's dulse butter, isn't it? Dulse, so um, it's dried seaweed from Northern Ireland. Um, it's really lovely. Obviously, seaweed has a naturally salty flavour, a uh, salty uh, saltiness to it. So it works really well with butter. Obviously, salted butter is amazing. So, um, yeah, just a little uh, dulse. Right, so these chicken breasts. So they've been stuffed with this tequila pepper pesto and they've been sort of wrapped in some cling film then we've poached them and
and now I'm going to dry the outside. Okay. And I'm going to put, I'm just going to do it in butter. Depends on the recipe I say just in butter, so I'll stick to that. Now the trick with the butter is you want to wait until it goes quiet before you put anything in. So it's a signal. You can hear it. When it stops making a noise, we can add the food. I'll, I'll explain why in two seconds. I'm just going to season the skin side with some molten salt. So this hasn't been seasoned yet at all. The only seasoning is the actual tequila pepper itself. It's still in the pepper. It's going quiet now. Mm, not quite. And this is how things don't stick. Because if you put it in too early, there's still um, the sort of buttermilk in there and it will stick. Whereas if you let it go quiet, it's gone quiet now. It's gone quiet. And then you add your food, it shouldn't stick. Famous last words, I don't know, but it shouldn't stick. So, as I said, the chicken is perfectly cooked, so you don't want to cook it too much in the pan. The only reason we're putting it in the pan is to one is to caramelise sort of the skin and then obviously to warm it through a little bit. Oh my God, it will spit, so be really careful. Oh, it's looking good already, so look, we're just going to put it on its edge. Like that, because obviously it's round, so it hasn't got a flat bottom to it. That's really nice. Okay, and then we're going to go onto the other edge. So it won't burn because he says it won't burn because you put the cold food in there and it's cooling the butter down all the time. So it should be, um, it should be, should be good. Um, so everyone's really enjoying the butter tip. Um, yeah. If, if, you know, all this thing about sticking, it's all a myth. If you just make sure your food is dry, not wet, and you make sure there's no moisture left in the butter, then it won't stick. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> so look at that. Look at that. that looks. Can you see that? It looks amazing. You want it now. I always say you don't want things to be. You don't brown things off. You you want them to be a, like a golden orange colour, not brown. Brown is too far, you know, and it takes away some of the nice flavour. So look, I think we're almost there with that now. And I'm just going to turn it onto its flesh side. And I'm going to baste it. And I'm actually going to put a tiny bit more butter in here now. And people always worry about how much salt chefs use, but really most of it falls off in the pan. So that's why you have to keep adding it. It's always good to add salt in layers. So you don't put it all in at the end, you put it a little bit at the stage of cooking. So therefore, what I'm going to do is, see that looks really good, I'm very happy with that. I'm just going to put a little bit of salt down on the top again. Okay, so, the, so the, 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 there's very little salt on that. So I'm going to put this in a very, very low oven. Now thankfully, these ovens are actually really good because you've got four ovens and all the different temperatures. So I'm going to put this in a very low, almost like the, the plate warming cut one. I'm just going to leave that in there for a few minutes. Now, 18 minutes is halfway through, I'm guessing. I'm going to check my potato. Okay, that's looking lovely as well. Definitely, um, boulanger potato. As we all know, boulanger potato is um, layers of onion, chicken stock, potato, named after the bakeries when people used to take their potatoes along on a Sunday morning and then the baker would put them into the baking oven and he would cook them for the people whilst they were in church apparently, something like that. And then stick a leg of lamb on it as well. Right, so, I mean, we're pretty organized there. So that's in there, that's sitting there in the oven there for a couple of minutes. So now we can do the beetroot dish. 
to the beetroot is in here we've got some lovely roasted beetroots we've got some nice sort of yellow golden ones and we've got just some normal sort of red ones and would you say this is one of your signature sorrel dishes um kind kind of yeah kind of i'm gonna put a tiny bit of olive oil in there and again a tiny bit of salt i'll explain about what you're saying laura in a second about why it is kind of like a bit of we've had it on the menu for quite a long time a version of this um so th these have been uh cooked on salt as well and then peeled and then um obviously just just chopped up nicely so i'm going to flash these in the oven and i'm pretty sure on the recipe it says four minutes so that's an approximate time you just want to warm them through so i'm just going to pop them in there so that's the lower oven which is about what about 160 I'd say but to be honest you could put them in a 180 oven just for a couple of minutes it's literally just to warm them through um, and now we can plate up so I'm going to take the plate can you see that um, oh chicory right this chicory I love chicory because it's very bitter and so let me show you this so this is still, it's still raw, but it looks almost like it's cooked. It looks like, look at that, it looks fantastic. It looks so lovely. And I'm gonna cut away the root, and then that's gonna leave us with lovely pieces. You can see those. Lovely, nice big, which are crunchy still. Um, they look like they're wilted, but they're not. They're still lovely and crunchy. Um, the big ones I'm going to cut down the middle, I think, to make it nice and pretty. But you can do whatever you like. And, mmm, that's oh, lovely. Okay, first thing goat cheese mousse with Greek yogurt. I'm going to put one spoonful on. And another spoon for long. So empty the pot. So, in there. Like that. Douglas fir mayonnaise. So the lovely combination is Douglas fir, Christmas tree, basically, um, with the goat cheese and the beetroot. Uh, Douglas fir has, that, uh, as I'm sure you all know, has that lovely lemony, piney flavour, and it works so well with this. So I'm just gonna, and what we've done is we've been able to make you like a little, your own little piping bag, so like that, and you can just squeeze it out. So what we do, we make a Douglas fir oil, and then obviously add the pasteurised egg and the vinegar and stuff like that. Uh, and then we've got an apple, so we're just gonna do a couple of slices. And we want to do like matchstick kind of size, so roughly speaking. So. Quick question about the, uh, the chicory, how do you compress that? You have to use a, a vacuum pack machine. And does anything go into it? I mean, so it? Um, take the chicory, cut it into four, olive oil, salt, lemon juice and that's it. So we keep it nice and natural. Um, and then you place it in the bag and then seal it and it removes all the air completely but it also impregnates the chicory with the oil and the lemon and the salt so really it's just emphasizing all the natural flavors of the chicory that it would have anyway so we're not trying to alter the flavor of the chicory it just gives it a really lovely texture um, it's another way of eating it raw basically i'm just going to check my dauphin uh can you call it dauphin you can see it's getting a nice colour on top now, and I reckon it's had about 12 minutes. And the beetroot, we've had four minutes, I think, but roughly speaking. I mean, I, again, these are cooked, so we're only warming them through. I'm going to give them a little shake with the olive oil. Goat cheese is on the plate. Beetroots, we're going to scatter our beetroots around. I think there's enough for two here, so... I'm just going to put about five or six pieces on. That's it, that's really nice. Um, there we go. You can plate it up however you like. 
So I like to do this this way because you can see that. Because I like to, as you're eating a dish, I like to have every mouthful to be slightly different. So as you're going along, you're going to have some goat's cheese mousse. Then you're going to have some Douglas fir mayonnaise. So I'm going to do about. It's, this is very strong, so I'm going to do about five blobs. And it, it, it's a weird thing, it almost feels like it's really salty, but it isn't. It's, this is an unusual sort of thing. Um, but you're drunk. Now we're going to put on our chicory, which is just stunning. How do you decide how to position and plate things? Are you just doing that as you go along? Or? It's purely based on um, how you want to eat it. Okay. You know, so, you, so, so, the, so the reason why I've cut the chicken up and not left it whole is because yeah. I, want, I want people to be able to eat some chicory with the, beef, with the Douglas fern with the goat's cheese. Okay. If you do one big piece of chicory, you're probably likely to eat a lot of chicory without the other elements. Um, so that's that. And then we've got the chicory over there. And then we've got some apple, like, um, and so matchsticks. So the apple brings our acidity. It's got malic acid in it. The goat's cheese is our sort of lovely, um, obviously creamy element. We've got the lovely lemony, piney Douglas fir mayonnaise. We've got the earthy beetroot. We've got the very bitter uh, chicory. So it's sort of ticking a lot of boxes. Um, that's that. Uh, obviously this portion is far too big for the restaurant. It would normally be a quarter of that size. Um, and here we have, uh, this is a beetroot syrup, so this is our sweet element, it's very sweet. It's made with just um, beetroot juice and a little touch of sugar, and a tiny touch of raspberry vinegar. It's a little bit tricky for the guys to see the plate, because it's kind of really I'm annoying going to... where the messages pop up. Ah, right, okay. So in that case... Let's move it. So... Here we go. And then the, finally, we're going to put on the beautiful nutty element at the end, which is the toasted sesame seeds. So this dish is all about eating and flavour. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. It's just really what it tastes like. Okay. So there we are. There's your starter. Um, which you can serve sort of warm, just above room temperature. So yeah. do, I, do I get to eat it now? Or you do get to eat it now. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody would like to have some um, photographs afterwards. So um, oh, why don't you take one? Now? So I'll take some photos of these, and usually what we're going to do is have these photographed up in advance, so that when people are making these at home, uh, you can kind of have a reference point before you get started. So next time, hopefully that. Yeah, happen. we're going to try our best to do that. Um, well, um, most definitely. So now we can plate the uh, chicken up. Um, I'm going to lift up this again, put my sauce on there. I'm going to put my smoked broccoli puree just there, just on the edge. Oh, and I'm going to put actually the, um, oh, there's a piece of paper, I've got to say this, in the bottom of the broccoli. To start, so take, uh, remove that. Um, that's just a soap of any moisture and then we're just going to flash that in the oven as well now along with our potato so, so, you, so you could put that in the microwave so again that's just gone into a hot oven though that's what people yeah are a couple of minutes yeah the idea is to keep this really simple the oven's kept on one temperature mostly and you can just put it all in and it's all cooked so you're just warming it up really um i need i need a whisk Mm. Oh, sorry, um, forgot something. Um, the vegetarian version of this is, rather than the goat's cheese mousse, there would be, I think I mentioned this earlier, I warmed up some goat's cheese. And it's just pure goat's cheese, uh, rag, um, golden cross, and you just lay that on instead of the mousse because there's gelatine in the mousse. And also, because of the uh, egg element in the mayonnaise, um, we've made this Douglas fir powder, and this is a bit of a chefy thing, is that if you use something called multidextrin, which they use in like energy drinks and protein shakes, um, you can turn an oil into a powder. So this is a powder of 
Christmas tree. <laughs> smells amazing. So it's like lime, and then so rather than the mayonnaise, you can sprinkle this over. So then that keeps it vegetarian. Obviously, if you're a vegan, you just take the cheese off completely. Right, so what we do, so we can plate up, I think. So the piquillo pepper pesto, I've just had it sort of just, you know, just sort of a tepid temperature, just sort of kept it somewhere warm. Um, plate. Warming up. Chicken out. Okay. And uh, broccoli's in there. This is here, this is it. Right, so if you want to be chefy, you can do a quenelle. Okay, so this is enough for two in this part. It's quite strong, you don't need lots of it. Um, so you take half of it there. And uh, I'm sure you know how to do a quenelle, but hopefully I won't drop it on the floor. Okay, so you do a quenelle. Like that. Let me pop that on the plate. Now I know you can't see it, but I don't know how else I can uh, show you. Um, this puree, this smoked broccoli puree, is really super, super tasty. It's absolutely lovely. So we're just going to warm this up now. What I like to do is, I can't see if you can see that there. I like to do like just drop a spoonful on like this. Okay, like that. So, a kilo pepper pesto and a smoked broccoli puree. Now we have the chicken. Carve this, you can leave it whole, um, you can do whatever you like, of course. I like to carve it. That's it. Nice sharp knife. Oh, look at that. <laughs> there we go. Look. So, you know, you can think like a chicken Kiev. You know, like when you put like a uh, butter inside, it, it's almost like that. It smells so good. Really does. One piece there. One piece there, and then I can hear the timer going off for the broccoli. Dilly did, dilly did. There we go, and the broccoli is now ready. You actually mean in your head, don't you? Yes, in my head. So Steve and has this incredible think, uh, ability never ever to get the time wrong, despite not having a watch on or anything. Mm, and normally, you're always right. Right, so um, potato, I think just serve it on the side. You can put it on the plate if you like, but I think it's quite dainty just to stick it on the side, on the side dish. Um, so take that out. Be really careful because when it's hot, it will really just fall apart. There we go. There's the potato. Then we have our broccoli. So we're just going to put a few pieces of broccoli. Just a couple of bits. And then we've got our sauce. So. You can take a little whisk, put it in a bigger, take a little whisk, give it a little, little whisk, and then you can pour that into a, a jug, um, and then you can serve that at the table, or you can just put it on now. Can you see this? You can just put it on, and shellfish and chicken is an incredible. Uh, Combination is really, really delicious. So. Why does that work so well? Um, what, why does it work so that well? Like, what, what was in the sauce? Uh, it's a longestine sauce. Okay. So Dublin Bay prawns, longestines. It's based on like a crayfish sauce recipe, which is called a nontois sauce. Um, but essentially, it's just uh, uh, carrots, onion, leeks, celery, spices like coriander seeds, fennel seeds, star anise, um, lots of onion, uh, white wine, brandy tomato paste, um, fish stock, longestine bones, uh, cream, uh, tarragon stalks, um, I think it's uh, a little bit of lemon juice at the end, I think it's about it. So that's, that's the dish there, it's beautiful, and you've got your potato, there is what to go with it, that's lovely. 
Um, so that's your starter, that's your main course. The pudding is super easy, we've already done it for you. So there's your three courses. We've already covered off the uh, vegetarian starter, so now we can do the vegetarian main course. Which is very simple, and you've got very little to do. I think everyone's getting very concerned at the moment about the amount of washing up. Mm, I think they should be. <laughs> This is where the, at least the children have got something to do tomorrow. So, vegetarian main course, very simple. This is a spelt risotto, which is 100% finished for you, which will go into a, a pan. Again, you could drop this in a pan of boiling water, boil in a bag. Okay, so we're going to warm this through nice and gently. There. This is, uh, is really, really nice. It's soy sauce and uh, um, grapeseed oil and nigella seeds and a touch of vinegar. It's really lovely. So it's quite um, a little bit salty, a little bit sharp. That's our dressing. So we put that in there so we can, it's important that we can uh, stir the seeds as we um, plate up our, our dish. Okay. So what's binding this is a Jerusalem artichoke puree. So we've taken Jerusalem artichokes, scrubbed them with a nail brush, so skins on of course, which gives them loads of more, uh, much more flavour. And we've made a puree and then we've bound these spelt in the, um, uh, in the puree. So it's really lovely. So that's ready. This is really nice. This is uh, red cabbage braised with blueberries. So that's going to go in there. And again, we're just going to warm up. Again, you can pop that in the microwave, to be honest. You don't have to do all this fat around like I am. Um, so we're going to warm this all through. There we go. So that's essentially just uh, sh chiffonade or shredded cabbage with some blueberries and a little bit of um, red wine vinegar. So what we're trying to do is have some saltiness from the dressing and some, this is quite nutty with a nutty feel to it. And this is quite um, fruity but also acidic. So we're trying to create a nice balance of flavours and textures in the mouth. So, here we go. Plate. And basically, we can treat it like a risotto. I know people find risotto a bit boring sometimes, but I think this is lovely. And then we're going to shake it out. I better not break this plate, it's a wedding plate. Um, Could you feel the tension from the other side of the room if you did that? And then, so the cabbage, which is really lovely, sharp, acidic, the blueberries, really nice. And to finish, we've got our beautiful dressing. And you want to stir it, put all your nigella seeds on there, or onion seeds, as it's called. And there we go. <laughs> because you said our wedding plate, <laughs> Emma's just brought up the whole wedding napkin. Oh, yeah. Bottle. Okay. Okay, so that's the vegetarian main course. Okay. Laura, could you get me another one of those plates, please? Thank you. Mm. Lastly, we have the uh, vegan dessert. Super simple, super tasty. Again. We have 
10. Poached in hibiscus syrup. So we've made a beautiful. That was my plate. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, we've made a beautiful um, hibiscus syrup, and we've um, we've dr um, dry, dried hibiscus leaves and uh, cooked the pears in it. So and in a way, it resembles you know pears poached in red wine uh, to, to a certain extent. Um, and then this is really simple. Again, we're just going to pears on the plate. It's very, very simple, yes, but super tasty. Pairs on the plate, like this. We've got a tarragon yoghurt. This is vegan yoghurt. Um, and it's tarragon, so it's a little bit sweet, a little bit sour, but it's, um, the idea is that tarragon has a lovely aniseed flavour, so although it sounds unusual to put it with a dessert, it's actually a really perfect thing to put with a dessert. You know, the aniseed, like dill is aniseed, chervil is. Um, so this is really nice. Um, this is just a bit of yoghurt, so this really, is really aimed at vegans to be honest because obviously you can't have ice cream um, as a vegan. So we're going to put a nice big dollop of that there, it's really beautiful. Um, the juice that's left over in the bag is our, almost like our hibiscus consomme, like it was there. And then finally we've got these very beautiful black pepper um, caramel pastry shards. So this is, so pepper is lovely in caramel, it's really, really delicious. Pepper's lovely with um, pears, it's really nice. Um, and we're just gonna lay these over the top. Okay, and there we have our vegan, vegan dessert. Um, and then at the table, you can just pour your, just come in, pour your syrup. Easy. That's it. Do you want to ask if anybody has uh, any other questions? Any uh, questions? I think I was just having a look through. So somebody's saying about wine recommendations, and we kind of we didn't have time to do that this time, but we thought next time would it be helpful if we make some kind of supermarket recommendations that people could get hold of? Where do people buy their wine? I, I, well, I don't know. I'm not an expert on wine, but um, we I think I think yeah, yeah we, we could ask our sommelier potentially to do that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Any any questions? Uh, no, I think everybody would just like to see all of the plates one more time. So right. we'll photograph them and share those, but maybe if you could just put them in front of the camera as well one more time. Okay, so we have your bread, bread and butter, and we have the uh, salad. Uh, warm beetroot salad with Douglas fir, sesame, goat's cheese and chicory. Then we have our main course of uh, corn-fed chicken with piquillo pepper, pesto, smoked broccoli and longestine sauce. On the side, a boulanger potato on the side. And then to finish, we have a chocolate and hazelnut uh, marquise. I hope it all goes well. Yeah, thank um, you. Nice to um, have had so many of you joining in. Um, lovely questions and comments. Hope you have lots of fun with it tonight. Uh, we're going to aim to do these every fortnight. Yeah. Yeah. 30th, 30th so of, uh, yeah, that'll be the next one. And then after, that, obviously, um, something special for Valentine's, which may be more like the New Year's dinner. It might be a bit more elaborate. Um, something yeah. a bit more special. Um, but what we'll try to do is always give a week's notice before ordering. Because um, we, we have sold out, it does go pretty quickly, um, which has been really amazing. So thank you very much for all the support. Um, and yeah, it's quite hot here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just really looking forward to seeing all of the uh, all of the pictures. So if you could share them later, hashtag uh, Sorrel Suppers. I can't see what Miss Bush is saying other than just lots of comments, which is really nice. Um, but yeah, just share the photos. That would be really helpful. And um, yeah, look forward to the next one. Okay. Bye. Bye. I need to. Be